Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video in the Clean ASP.NET Core API with CQRS series. In the previous videos we just get started or got started but we also have implemented versioning in our API. And we have tested in Postman that actually versioning works. However, we have a small problem already because we also want to have Swagger kind of like the documentation and a place where we can actually test our API until we will introduce this concept of unit testing or integration testing, sorry. However, when we run the API right now and Swagger opens, we see this very, very bad error message. So what can we do about that? Now, the story is that unfortunately, Swagger doesn't work out of the box with API versioning. So we actually have to tell Swagger or instruct Swagger how exactly it should do its magic. And what Swagger actually does is two things. First of all, it actually registers some services that generates all the URLs and things like that. And then for each version of the API, it should generate those services with the endpoints and whatever we want to request. But it also needs to actually generate a document because Swagger uses a JSON document in order to render it as or in the UI the way that we are very accustomed. So this means that in our proceedings, we actually need to instruct Swagger exactly how to do that. This is really not very, very complicated, but there are some steps that we actually have to take into consideration. And the first step is we will need to install a new NuGet package here. And let's go to manage NuGet packages. And here on browse, we wait just a short second. So it would be this one, Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC versioning API Explorer. So we have already installed the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC versioning during the last video, but in this one to also configure Swagger with it, we need also the API Explorer part for that. So we just hit the install button, we accept everything that needs to be accepted, and that should be done. And afterwards, if we check here, we see that we have this ASP.NET Core MVC versioning package, and we also have this versioning API Explorer package. So that's actually the first part that we had to do and actually everything should be fine right now. Now, of course, if we install a package, then the next thing that we need to do is, well, we need to configure how this package actually should work. And in this case, what I would like to do is go here in our program class and here we need to configure some services. Uh, and we have here builder.services. And what we need to add is add version API Explorer. So that's, that's the method that we actually need to get. So everything should be fine with that. However, this kind of like uh, has some configuration options. So we can just put this in a Lambda expression. And there is some very, very basic stuff that we actually have to configure here. Now, the first thing that I would like to do is, well, instruct exactly Swagger how actually it should read the version or instruct the add versions API Explorer or the version API Explorer, how it should handle these concepts of different versions that we have. And this kind of like builds up on what we did last time when we uh, talked a lot about this API version reader and we have decided to use this URL segment API version reader. So if you don't know exactly what it is, then please pause this video, go to the previous one in the series and you'll get plenty of explanation on this topic. However, right now, what I would like to do is I would like to set up here a group name format. Now, this is a format and this is a string that we have to paste kind of like in this format because it actually instructs this version the API Explorer how to read this version and how it would correspond to the, I, to the API versioning that we actually have here with major and minor. So that's a very, very important thing. Uh, now, the other very important thing is when we actually run our API, we want actually that the version of the API should be substituted automatically in our, in our URIs. So we also have to instruct this version API Explorer that we actually need to do that. So we have the substitute API version URL and we set this to true. And that's everything that we actually need to do for this version API Explorer, nothing more than that. However, then we have the swagger, uh, we have the second part or the second step where we would actually 
need to configure Swagger for that. To do that, we have this Swagger or Builder Services add Swagger Gen method. And theoretically, what we would need to do is actually go here and use the Swagger Gen options to, well, actually create or define exactly how Swagger should treat each version of our API. However, in order to do that, we would need to also inject a service which is added by this versioned API Explorer, which is the iAPI version descriptor. And we cannot simply just inject a service when we actually do this because we are here directly on the services. So in this case, this is the part where it gets just a little bit trickier because we would have to use the iOptions pattern in order to configure Swagger to use or to know how to use the versioning that we have in our API. So for that, let's go ahead and let's create here a new folder and we'll call this folder options and probably we'll use this options pattern a lot in the coming videos. And here, let's add a, a new class to that and let's call this configure, uh, sorry, swagger options. That would be the name of our class. And in order to be able to use the configure options method on the builder and the services, we actually need to inherit from I configure options. Okay, and this configure options is a generic and we have to inherit from, from Swagger or we have to specify Swagger gen options as a type parameter for that. So let's also add the necessary usings for that, Microsoft extensions options, and this should be in Swashbuckle, Swashbuckle ASP.NET Core Swagger Gen. And of course, then the only thing that we would need to do is of course, implement the interface. But as said, we will need the iAPI version descriptor. So let's have this a private field, private read only, and uh, let's call this a provider. Of course, we have to provide a type, which is I API version description provider, actually description provider. Let's also add the namespace for that. Now this would be in the API Explorer, which is okay. And let's name this field just the provider. And then we can have a constructor here. And the cool thing about this is that here, if we go this options pattern way, we can here inject services. And we can say here that we want an iAPI version description provider, which would be called provider. And we just assign it to that field. That would be it. Okay. And now in the configure method, we need to actually do some stuff here. Of course, we don't want to throw an exception. So what we want to do is actually very, very simple. So it's not very complicated. We actually want to go through all the descriptions or the different ver version descriptions that we have in this provider. And for each of them, actually generate the Swagger doc or instruct Swagger how to generate this Swagger doc. So we can have a for each here. And we can say that for each description in provider dot API version descriptions. And here we would need to say uh, options because it's the options from Swagger options. And here we have a Swagger doc. And this Swagger doc, of course, takes in uh, two parameters. And the first we have to give it a group name, description dot uh, group name, so that it knows the, the name of that specific group. And then we have to provide an open API version for that. And since we need to do this for each description that we have here, I would extract this in a private method. So it would be private. It should return an open API. How is it called? Open API info. It should return that. Hopefully I have typed correctly. So using Microsoft Options API models. Okay, that should be fine. And let's call this create version info, very, very simple. And here, what we do actually is we'll say here that for info equals new open API. 
open API info. Okay, and we'll use here an object initializer to set the values that we want. And actually, there's two things that we want to set. So first, uh, we want to, to set a title, and that would be, for instance, CWK eShop API series or without a series. That's just a string that, that we have to specify. Then we have to specify the version for it. So it would be version, and that would be this is what we take from the description. Of course, we need to pass in the API version description for that. And from the description, then we would just take the API version and we'll make it to string, and that should be it. And we just have to return this info. Uh, just one second. Of course, we don't need a semicolon here. And just uh, return info cool. so we are done with that now here in this swagger doc we just have to simply come back and just say that uh, hey cre create me a new version for this so create a uh, version info and we just provide the description and that should be it so right now everything should be good to go i guess so this is the point where we actually can can go back to our program file and here at our program file where we have this swagger gen i would like to also add just uh below it builder.services and here we have configure options and this of course is a typed method in which we can specify the options that we just have created so configure swagger options i guess that was the name of the class so if we do that everything should be fine and right now for the services part we should actually be good to go however there's one other thing that we would need to do and this one is actually on when the app is already built because we have here this type of stuff actually what i want to do i want to use swagger not only if we are in development so we just uh, take everything outside of here and this is actually where we configure uh, our middleware and here for the swagger ui we should also actually provide the necessary information so this also takes in an options object that we can leverage to actually define exactly what swagger should do so let's do that and here there's exactly the same thing we would need the i api version the description provider but here the, the app is already built. So here we can just require a service from the already existing service provider. That wouldn't be a problem. So we have here var provider equals app.services. And here we have this uh, get required service method. And we want a service of type i api version description provider namings are fairly long here but that's it we just have to provide them once then intellisense will do the rest so nothing more than that and similarly to what we have done in the services we also need here a for each loop and once again in for each description in provider dot api version descriptions and here we should actually provide an endpoint so options dot where is it uh sorry for all the typos options dot uh swagger endpoint so we have to to specify uh what the endpoint looks like and here we might provide some longer things so let's go here and say that uh well what we want to do first of all we need to provide a string and let's use here string interpolation because we would need have swagger and then uh what we will need here is description dot group name and then we need the swagger json so if i typed ev everything correctly that should be it and then we just have to provide the description description api version dot to string so similarly to what we have also done earlier 
but here I don't actually want this so it should be like that so now everything actually should work so this is the big moment let's try to run the application again and see if everything works and unfortunately I'll bring this just here unfortunately we have here an error so if we look at this at the the error that we actually got is actually because uh, we have forgotten something very, very, very important. So let's go for one second back to our controllers. The problem with the controllers are that if you don't specify here an HTTP method, ASP.NET Core would just infer that it is an HTTP GET. However, Swagger doesn't do this. So we have to explicitly provide the idea or this verb on each method. So we would have to go here and say that we have an HTTP GET. Uh, because if we don't do that, actually Swagger will see this as an ambiguous route. So it actually won't resolve it. Hopefully now everything will work. Let's open the application again and see if everything's okay. So in this case, right now we see that we have these endpoints. We see that this is for V1. If we check in the definition, we see that we also have a V2 for that. And here the endpoint has changed to V2. So if we go to V1, let's just try it out. Okay, try it out, execute, and we get this information, this product, in this case, it is Visual Studio. So we know that this is V1, because V2 should return Rider as a project, so let's, as a product, so let's try this out. And we see that in this case, it's Rider. So cool, right now we have a version API and we have found a way to make it work with Swagger. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you did enjoy this video and find this content useful, please don't hesitate to hit the thumbs up button and of course the subscribe button if you didn't subscribe already because there are plenty of videos to come here in this series and that might just interest you. Also, if you think that this content might be useful for others, then feel free to share it, spread the word. Sharing is caring and it would be highly appreciated from me. And uh, well, th th this being said, thank you very, very much for watching. And until the next video in the series, I wish you the very best.